let's say you have another two three years uh, or let's say two years more or maybe more so um, can you let's say in, in, a, in a brief um, explain what exactly you are you are doing to a level that people can understand who are also not in this core field and um, how is it somehow related also as you rightly said about the CO2 and also the ocean and everything let's say put it in a climate change context or global warming context on all those things okay yeah so um, my uh, main uh, uh, topic of interest here is nitrous oxide now nitrous oxide is a gas which is uh, important in our climate in the sense it is also a greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide we all know more about the effects of carbon dioxide the increasing emissions uh, for nitrous oxide the emission is much much lesser than carbon dioxide however one molecule of nitrous oxide has the warming potential of 400 co2 molecules so even a little emission has a larger impact on the temperature and the nitrous oxide concentrations have been rising now the oceans are one of the important sources of nitrous oxide but it is not very uh, clearly quantified there is still much that is left to be unknown for example in the oceans particular areas like uh, coastal zones or estuaries or even um, there are certain zones in the ocean where there is low oxygen they are called oxygen minimum zones now those have been we have observed that those are sources of nitrous oxide but is there a seasonal pattern or which process is producing like so nitric nitrous oxide is produced solely by microbes so it's a microbiological uh, process so there are two processes so we want to see which process is the major contributor or if there is a seasonal pattern and what is controlling is the is the rising temperature increasing the into emission is the rise in salinity so the reason we chose the baltic is the baltic sea is a unique system because it's landlocked but it also has a connection to the north sea and it has one area which is anoxic so it is devoid of oxygen throughout the year and so we want to really understand quantify and uh, have a clear idea that who are the main players in the N2O or the nitrous oxide emission to the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, so if I say globally, this has an impact because uh, the, of course the oceans are 75%, but these uh, coastal areas are usually the hot spots or the, uh, they have a significantly more contribution than the open ocean. And yeah, so I'm, really trying to understand this more and um, i'm using stable isotopes also to give more answers to some very specific questions here wonderful i think um, uh, really i think you have uh, got the gene of uh, of uh, a teacher from your mother i think in a very very brief <laughs> way you could explain so nicely yeah. and uh, for every layman can also understand. Uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, so now, what's how you look at it? Um, you have a plan. You are going to be for let's say another two years, three years down the lane. And um, how do you look at it? Um, is there, let's say, a kind of fixed timeline that you say your interest? Also, maybe your family together. If you want to be back in India and work for certain institutions or you say um, let's say I'll keep it open and I'll see it's not something now but I could also better um, you know you feel more that you can contribute from here also quite a lot to Indian science and you know cooperating with them because science for me today it has become 
international. It's not about a country science. It's, you cannot call it that way. It's not a German science, Indian science, or you know. So it can be only cooperative science. It has to be together, you know. And especially in your fields, I mean, recently we have seen a polar stand, um, which yeah. was also traveling, and uh, you know, uh, around hundred mm -hmm. scientists from all over the world was there in such an expedition when it happens. Uh, so, what what's your future looks like? What what is you have a plan, or you say, I don't know. Let me go through, and then let's see. Yeah. So yeah. So my husband is also an oceanographer, so he is familiar with the nature of our jobs. And uh, uh, yeah. So because of Corona, I would say our plans are a little uh, uncertain yeah. right now, and because. Um, uh, immediately thought since uh, so my husband works in the Middle East in Kuwait and I work in Germany and my son he is here with me so and he's only three years old so personally it's a difficult situation because uh, long distance but we thought initially we could meet more frequently but now because of corona things are uh, like uh, not so bright and rosy so uh, yeah so now I, I really can't say the plans I would like ideally something where I have of course the more my research also continues but my family is also with me uh, but yeah <laughs> yeah things are a bit uncertain but of course down the line I think I would like to be in India and, okay okay uh, so um, recent year because you said um, Kuwait and all, um, uh, is it he working with uh, with um, this uh, King Abdullah Kusat uh, Science and Technology or um, or it's different uh, because he's working. Uh, uh, no, uh, that is uh, yeah, that is I think in Saudi Arabia and okay. um, he is in the Kuwait Institute of Scientific Research. Ah, okay, okay. Because I have a friend who is working in the other one. I think that is in Jeddah. Maybe I don't know. Um, I yes, think, uh, yes, you're right. right. Yeah, so, I also have a few friends yeah, from my institute. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Good. So I think I'm looking at the time. So I promised you around 45 minutes, and I also uh, know you have other commitments too. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rupa. It's uh, wonderful um, speaking with you, and I'm wishing you all the, all the very best. And uh, continue to hold the um, Indian flag high, but at the same time also to make sure that the group you are associated with also to make a lot of contributions and successes to their group and to for yourself as well. And um, all the best to your family and um, uh, a great respect for people like you as uh, young women, especially with also actually having a small daughter and managing the whole thing, you know, it's, um, it's really something of great uh, respect and hearts off and uh, take care of your health and especially in the corona times and uh, wish you all success and hopefully at some point of time maybe that could be some events that could be organized so that you know physically uh, where you can give some lecture and um, you know uh, for also in terms of Indian diaspora and other things uh, here as well. Good. So, thanks a lot. Thank you. Viewers. Thank you so um, much for having me. It was really nice. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, I said thank you for having me here. I'm very honored to be here. Absolutely. Today. I mean, um, and I, if somebody feels, uh, yes, please yeah, also. No, I was done. Yes, let us know um, if you come across any scientists of Indian origin or um, maybe. Um, it, it, our idea is it's not only about the Indian uh, origin scientists, but it could be also um, someone you know who actually are working very closely in, with the Indian uh, researchers as well. It could be also German or other international people here who can also. So, uh, if you come across mm -hmm. anyone who would be interesting and who we can really interact with, please let me know and we can take it up. And. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you viewers for this very nice, um, you know, for this episode and thanks for joining and uh, hopefully we look forward to the next episode with another promising uh, 
and uh, diaspora Indian origin scientists, academicians uh, who are contributing in building bridges between India and Germany. Thank you. Stay well and see you next time. Okay. Rupa, thank you. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.